All right, here's our Bills reporter, Dave Naylor. Dave, after another heartbreaking playoff exit, where does Buffalo go from here? You know, I think they've got to address their vertical passing game, and I think the evidence was there in their loss to the Kansas City Chiefs. They had two passes that went past the first down marker. The longest play of the game was an 18-yard Josh Allen run, and, you know, Stephon Diggs, who has been uh, the number one receiver for this team and had a great first half of the season in two games against the Kansas City Chiefs, he failed to achieve 25 yards receiving in either of them. Now, Gabe Davis, their number two receiver, was out of the game with an injury, but he has failed to live up to expectations the last couple of years, and even he said so on Monday that he expects to go to free agency. They've developed some good secondary targets in Khalil Shakir, second-year receiver, and rookie tight end Dalton Kincaid, but this team needs a bona fide downfield high-end threat. And just look at the Buffalo Bills draft history. Since they took Josh Allen in the first round of 2018, they have not drafted a single receiver in the first three rounds of the draft. In fact, they've taken just one in the first four rounds. Gabe Davis, a fourth-round selection in 2020. So I expect that to end and the Bills to go after a receiver, at least one, high in the draft this year to try to take advantage of the fact that Josh Allen is 28 next season. He's still right in the heart of his prime. They've just got to get better on the receiving end of the football. What is the next order of business for the Buffalo Bills right now? Well, I think the first thing they've got to evaluate is, is their coordinator. I mean, they made a coordinator switch with, at OC with Joe Brady taking over for Ken Dorsey midway through the season. That is still an interim title. He was the quarterback coach before he was promoted to that job. Now, he is on the list to be interviewed for the Atlanta Falcons head coaching opening. So it's possibly it's possible they could lose Joe Brady. But... I think there was an appreciation for him. I would expect that if he's available, the Bills will want to have him back. The other question will be on defense. Sean McDermott took over the defensive play calling last year after they had a very poor performance against the Cincinnati Bengals in the divisional round. It seemed to work, especially given the injuries that they sustained on defense. So does McDermott want to continue doing both jobs? That's another important question. But They've got some salary cap issues. The bills are roughly $50 million over the cap for next season. That's going to mean a lot of contract restructuring, likely starting with Josh Allen. Uh, that's likely going to mean players that they're going to have to walk to free agency that might otherwise want to be back. And I think there's also going to be have to contemplate and swallow hard on the contracts of players that they might want to part with, given their salaries, uh, such as Stefan Diggs at $18.5 million for next season. His production the second half of the year didn't really justify that. Still room for him to have a bounce-back season. Uh, but Von Miller being the most notable, uh, he got three years guaranteed when the Bills signed him in free agency two off-seasons ago. So another contract they're going to have to carry. There are definitely going to be issues. Younger, cheaper talent, I would expect, is coming in all sorts of places to the Buffalo Bills roster. The good news is they did start six players this year that were either rookies or second-year players. So they do have young talent up and coming and already present in the lineup, but there's going to be some adjustments, more turnover than we're used to seeing from the Bills in recent off-seasons. Bills have the NFL's fourth worst cap deficit in preparation for the new league year, which starts in March. The news just gets better. Dave Naylor, thanks.